What's up guys, it's Greg and this is Greg's Tech or Greggy's Tech. <laughs> Uh, as someone mentioned in the comments of the last video, but this is part two of the VPN setup and we're trying to link Rush the Rock machines over the internet, which uh, I believe it's been done before, but I want to come up with a standardized image so I can share it with you guys, other arcade people that um, may have a Rush the Rock machine and we want to link up and play together online. So I think this is going to be really fun. So this is part two of the series. And what I'm going to do first off is just kind of draw it on a whiteboard um, and we'll go through the topology really quick. Uh, last video was full of a lot of technical information. So I want to go over it really quick and then let's dive into the actual configuration and then hopefully it just works. We'll test it out and uh, test the latency and the throughput and everything else and see how it works and how well it works. So let's go to the whiteboard. All right, so hopefully this will help at a high level uh, everyone understand you know, how everything's laid out and how this should be working. So let's start with the server. The server that we have is a Linode server and that's just a website that I rent a server from per month. It's a virtual server, 10 bucks a month. I actually have it up on the screen here. Let me see if I can dial it and focus really quick. Yeah, so it's this one here, $10 a month, gig of RAM, one core, 24 gig solid state storage, and a bunch of transfer, two terabytes of transfer. So that's more than enough. I'm sure there's better options, but I've had good experience with these guys. So let's, um, let's dive into the topology of the server and the configuration. Let me get this back into focus. Okay, cool. So uh, let's start with my house, right? So at my house, let's just call this Greg's house. All right. So this, let's consider this my uh, my router, my internet connection, right? And then what we'll have is over Wi-Fi with one of these Raspberry Pis, which has a Wi-Fi adapter in it will have a Pi, okay? So that's the little Raspberry Pi I just showed you over Wi-Fi. Uh, and then on the Ethernet port, which is the network port right here, that's gonna go down to Rush Machine. And I could have multiple, but to keep it simple, you know, we're just gonna say I have one Rush at my house, it's connected, wired into the Pi side, and then Wi-Fi from the Pi out my internet connection. And let's just call this this cloud, the internet. All right. So this setup is gonna be the same for everyone. The only difference is if I have multiple rushes, which I do, I just add more pies, right? Because each one will connect to the VPN individually. So the Linode server is actually a server in Texas. So if we go over the internet and let me put Linode server and that's running the VPN server software, right? So this is the central hub of all the traffic, where it's going to go. This is like uh, when this Pi connects over VPN, it's going to connect to this server. And then everything else, all the spokes, everyone else will connect to the server and everyone will see everyone's traffic. So the goal is that the layer 2 information from that packet capture from the last video will pass through. So if I hit my gas pedal on Rush and it sends out that broadcast frame that I'm starting a game from my red car machine. It's going to hit the server and replicate to everybody else. So the setup is going to be the same. So let's say I have Buddy1, his house, over the internet, right? Get him a Pi. So these things are 35 bucks. And the Pi 3 just came out. I'm using Pi 2s. Um, the, the really nice thing about Pi 3s is they have Wi-Fi built in, so you don't have to spend 10 bucks on one of these USB Wi-Fi adapters. Um, and they're faster too, but this should be more than fast enough to um, encapsulate and connect with our VPN traffic. Uh, I believe this is a quad-core uh, giga RAM for these Pi 2s that I have. So the idea is I'll post publicly the image that I use, which will be a standard image, and then the thing that I'm going to keep locked down is the um, VPN certificate and passphrase. So two-factor authentication and you know if you want to get in this obviously just message me on uh, the Facebook page for Arcade Impossible or, or the YouTube and we'll get you joined in. The thing we have to stay in sync with right so if Bud1 has a rush machine and you just set this in the software and we'll show this later the BIOS but 
Citus Rush is set, set for color red. My Rush is set for color blue car. That's how it distinguishes which car is which. Um, and for the network broadcast traffic, it always includes the color of the car. So, um, you know, we can just add as many as we want. Uh, I believe it's limited to eight. Um, that's how many colors they have for cars. So we don't want to have more than eight people on this at the same time. And I've done this before on my, my two local machines, is if I set one rush to be red and the other rush is red on accident, then it won't work with multiplayer. It'll say that there's a conflict um, and that, will, that one machine will not be able to join the multiplayer session. All right, so I'm add another pi. So we can just do this times eight. You get the idea, right? So this is Rush, and this guy's gonna make his yellow. So this is what we need to coordinate and communicate about, is the color of the cars. So you get the idea. Uh, say a yellow guy hits his gas pedal. Um, the traffic, right? So it's all layer two traffic. We talked about this in the packet capture. But what's gonna happen is it goes to the pie, layer two. It's gonna hit the pie, and then the pie is gonna have a VPN client for OpenVPN. And what it's going to do is encapsulate that layer 2 traffic um, with IPsec or whatever else I set it up, but um, basically encapsulate this layer 2 traffic into our VPN uh, packets, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, it's just putting a wrapper around this so then it can traverse the internet over layer 3 and just go up and hit the VPN and it's going to trickle down to everyone else at the same time, all that broadcast traffic and we should be able to play a multiplayer game. So that's the idea. Hopefully that helped drawing it out. I don't want to drone on about um, the configuration and everything else. I'm just gonna post links to resources and how I found this in the video description, so please check there if you really want to dig into it. Um, and just one more comment about why I decided to go with Raspberry Pis. One, they're cheap, especially now with the ones with built-in Wi-Fi, it's 35 bucks. And two, uh, this, you know, you don't want to give people access to your internal network at your house, right? And a lot of people mentioned, well, you should just do a VPN um, point to point on your, your router and get, you know, custom firmware. But this is the, the most non intrusive solution that I thought of, right? You just drop a Pi in, all the encapsulation and encryption happens on the Pi and then traverses out. Other people on the VPN, all they can see is this traffic right here. They're not gonna see the rest of the traffic for computers on your network and everything else. So hopefully that helped. Um, let's dive into the Raspberry Pi configuration. All right guys, so we're in the arcade, got everything turned up. And what I did is I wired up uh, both of my, machine, my machines, excuse me, individually. Um, so this rush comes in over ethernet to this guy right here. And I got everything set up and I did a TCP dump so you can actually see all the um, frames going by. That's the network traffic from that machine that's on. So that's on its own and the idea is this will go out the internet to the VPN and we're going to get these two machines communicating even though they're going out different paths to the internet to a VPN server. And we're going to validate this on the VPN server too. So you can see on this one you can see all the frames going by from that machine that's powered on. All right, so next step is, uh, I did get connected to the VPN, so I wanna get both of these connected to the VPN, verify connectivity, um, and then we can start to do some tests and see uh, what it's like. So that's our next step is actually get it connected, um, and then hopefully it'll work, and then we can spend some time, you know, analyzing the delay and latency with this setup, and if there's any things that we can optimize. So on this machine we're connected, this Raspberry Pi we're connected to the VPN. We have an IP on the TAP interface 10.100.1.52. And on this Pi we're 10.100.1.51. So let's ping 10.100.1.52. We're getting a response. So it's working across the VPN. Um, we can validate on this side if we did a that TCP dump, but it's okay. Um, we can just ping the other way too. 10.100.1.51. And you can see the delay, right? So across the VPN, it looks like 
100 millisecond round trip, 140, 90, 90, 90. Um, and we'll see if we can reduce that by either reducing the encryption or the, um, the compression, see how that affects it. But the point is that we have two-way communication. They can ping each other over the VPN. They're both going to my VPN server, um, which is just a Linux server with CentOS 7 in Texas, and they're communicating back. So the idea is all of us will be connected to that, and it will broadcast all the traffic to um, everyone that's connected to the VPN. So this looks good. It's pretty stable now. It's like 90 to 100 millisecond ping round trip, which is totally fine for these. Um, we'll see how they react when we actually do a, a test with the two machines and race and see what the delay looks like. Um, so I think next step is uh, I need to bridge the Ethernet interface from the Rush machine to the Wi-Fi, which I've already done on this one. I'll do it on both, and let's just do a test without really um, troubleshooting or debugging packets on the VPN server. Let's just do a test and hit the gas pedal and see what happens. So in theory, if I hit the gas pedal on this right machine, the left one should see it. No. Not at all yet. Okay, so for some reason I'm guessing uh, we need to verify that it's actually bridging the Ethernet interface with the Wi-Fi to the VPN because it doesn't look like um, it's passing it along. So let me look at that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm using uh, TAP versus TUN uh, for the interface in OpenVPN. Uh, you'll be, read about that quite a bit if you look at doing this. But I'm, um, I'm tailing the file now with the traffic and I'm seeing it pretty regular now. So let's do another test and hopefully this isn't as uh, anticlimactic as the last one. But all right, I'm gonna hit the gas pedal on the right one now. Nothing. Hmm. Instance restarting. What's up guys? It's been a couple days uh, since I was messing with this. I've been thinking about it a lot today. Um, and I knew it was just something small, right? So I was troubleshooting a bit. And just to give you guys an overview of what's going on here, right? Instead of being in the arcade like I was earlier, I'm just on my uh, main office setup, uh, troubleshooting from here, so I have everything in one place, right? So this is Raspberry Pi 1 on one rush machine. This is Raspberry Pi 2. Um, and each one I just have multiple screens up, so I have two, one to show me a VPN connection, and one for just looking at um, data and troubleshooting. So if this focuses here, I created a bridge interface um, to bridge the local ethernet connected to the rush with the tap interface for the VPN. So it should bridge those two interfaces and then in theory send all the traffic over the VPN to everybody else. So if you see here, if I do a BR0, watch this right here, the number of received packets and dropped. So that's the broadcast packets from the machine advertising that it's there all the time and they're all dropped. So what I found, and, and for, let, let me come back to that in a second. In the middle here, this is my, um, my server in Texas, the VPN server, and I have a packet capture going on here on the tap interface. So everything VPN is right here, all right? And you can see here, I got some frames over that. So what I did was this brctl command, you can show, and look, my bridge only has ethernet zero, so I need to add my, um, my VPN interface to that. So I'm going to add it. And now if I show, you can see both and look at here at the packet capture on the VPN. So this is being sent to everybody. Now I'm curious, we, we can see if it's full tunnel, right? This Raspberry Pi to VPN, which is here, and if this is getting broadcasted back to the other Raspberry Pi, we're, we know we're good to go. So let's do a packet capture here. See if I have it and pass commands. Uh, yeah, let's do the tap zero, the VPN interface. Let's see if we see the frames from the other machine. And we do. That's freaking awesome. All right, great. So now um, I had to add this interface. So let me do that really quick to the other machine. So we should see both machines um, layer two traffic here and then we can go over and test and see that's actually working 
two rush machines multiplayer over the internet with VPN and we'll be good to go. All right, we're in the arcade. I got uh, both my pies set up here so we can debug the traffic. Uh, hopefully we won't have to do anything like that because it should just work, right? Um, yeah, we're good to go. So let's just test it out, right? I see the frames. This is uh, debugging the packets on both of the frames, rather on both of the pies. So let's hit our gas pedal on this right machine to start a game, and let's see if it shows up on the left machine. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, let's try to do this by myself. Obviously I'm gonna get someone else over here to test uh, latency and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna move the steering wheel on the left machine. Yeah, you can see it changing. Same game. Waiting for driver's on. Uh, reach my leg over and hit the gas here. Waiting for driver's on. You're selected. That's awesome. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna drive the the left car forward, and let's watch the right. There we go. Doesn't look like it's jumping around. I'm gonna hit the gas on the right machine. It doesn't look, it's got the um, interpolation, so it looks like it's smoothing out. Sorry the audio's so loud, guys. But this is great. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, so let's look at some of the uh, data and let's see if we can track the latency on this too.